Hello! <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to Ready City Play. Thanks for joining me tonight for Pauper's Ladder. Hey, Difter, Brian, Chris, Heggers, hey Keru, everyone in chat, thanks for joining me. We've got uh, Pauper's Ladder tonight, which is a adventure game, a fantasy adventure game uh, made in Brighton, here in the UK, by designer Paul Stapleton. And uh, he works for, well, he, he has a company called Bedsit Games, and they very kindly gave us a review copy of Pauper's Ladder when it came out in, like, 2019. <laughs> and I've got a copy. Hi, David. Thanks for stopping by. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, Pauper's Ladder, and... There it was an expansion at the UKG, which we've just come back from. So this live stream, if you're watching this back in the future, is about, well, less than a week after the UKG 2023. And Pauper's Ladder has just had the release of Moon Towers, which features loads of new cards for the game, as well as a solo mode. Now, I spoke to Paul um, during the or shortly before the pandemic possibly time becomes kind of hard to track but he gave me this uh as well uh this is one lonely pauper which is the sort of pre uh precursor to the moon tower solo moon tower solo edition of the game the game is for two to four players normally probably takes like an hour to play depends on your player count an hour to 90 minutes it is sort of in the vein of very sort of traditional feeling board games. But uh, in the game, there's a, a story. We're all paupers uh, living in this fantasy land. I'll tell you all about the story in just a minute. But I've also got this uh, one lonely pauper solo mode here. You can see here it's actually numbered 100, hand numbered, 110 out of 250. So they didn't make many of these. And then uh, the rest of the work went into the expansion there as well. Uh, Brian says Cobbled Island was at UKG. Nice. Oh my god, have I got my information wrong? I thought it was Moon Towers. Is that the first one? Is there two expansions for this? Do you all love this? And now I'm just playing the base game and I don't even have the cool new toys. Anyway, the, the, the thing is, um, I've wanted, I played this uh, a few times when Paul first very kindly gave me a review copy. I played it with um, some friends and then uh, I didn't get a chance to play it on the show and I really wanted to so I was very grateful when Paul gave me the solo mode to try out here on the show and uh, yes I think I, I think I don't know actually if Cobbled Island was at the UKG but I know actually now that you mention it Brian that there is the new a new expansion on the way and I'm pretty sure I saw Paul had printed it or at least had it coming very very soon so yes let me pretend that this is a marketing win where i knew all of that um and actually this is about and actually this is about the new expansion <laughs> which i don't have so anyway um in the game uh, there, the the we're living in the the land of Brighthelm, which is a fantasy land, and the ruler, the the ruler, beloved ruler of Brighthelm, has just passed away, and so there is now going to be a tournament to determine who the new ruler ruler will be. And now I shall read you some nice story text. Finally, the day of the tournament is here and you and your fellow paupers approach the city gates. The excitement in the air is palpable, but so too is the fear. Most of you have never set foot in the wild lands beyond your home. Stories of bandits, giants, and dragons have kept you company your whole life, and yet here you are, ready to leave that life behind and embark on another. Your thoughts are cut short by the voice of the tournament adjudicator as she greets you all and the cheers that meet her announcement. Colleagues, welcome to Garulium's <laughs> tournament. When it is over, one of you will rule in her stead and prove your faith to be well-placed. One of you will have the greatest power of all. 
However, power must be tempered by virtue, or Brighthelm is doomed. The virtues we seek in you are generosity, knowledge, bravery, fellowship, and magnificence. Through your deeds and exploration you will learn these virtues, and the first pauper to learn any three of them will be heir to a proud legacy. But beware! Outside the city walls, Brighthelm is an unpredictable and treacherous place. We have provided one of Garolium's Geru own magical birds to aid you, but beyond that, you're on your own. Now get out there and make your mark on the land. <laughs> so, we've got the game set up on the table here. As you can see, it's, um, it's a uh, main game board and player board. And I'm this big, chonky blue meeple right here. And I'm going to go on an adventure. So I've got over here my, uh, my pauper. I picked uh, Ginny Heaver because uh, she's blue. And also, she's the three to four player pauper. So, in um, in the main game of of Pauper's Ladder, what we're trying to do is accomplish any uh, three of these four virtues here. Uh, we've got generosity, knowledge. We've got magnificence slash bravery, and um, journal uh, fellowship over here in the journal. And uh, when we get one virtue, we'll mark it off here. When we get two virtues, we'll move up here. And when we get three virtues, we'll move up here. And we will have won the game. In the normal game of Pauper's Ladder, you don't have hit points. This is a special thing that's been added for the solo mode. We've got an aviary here where we're going to get our magical bird friend who's going to come and help us. So we'll pick one of those in just a minute. And we've also got our starting weapon down here, which is Ginny's Whittler. I'm a woodsmith from Blue Vale. Actually, I think there's some plot about some some story about Ginny here in the rulebook as well. Let's just see if I can't find that for you. Maybe I'm making up. No, it's here. Ginny learned to hold a blade before she learned to hold a quill, but had little appetite for fighting. Instead, she took her knife to the scraps of wood her father brought back from the forests outside Blue Vale. Over time, she became an accomplished woodcarver, trading her intricate works for food, clothes, and on rare occasions, gems. Ginny starts the game with her wood whittling blade. It's a surprisingly effective weapon. Um, so Ginny is... Yeah, so gems are just currency in the game. We've got uh, one, five gems and one gems. Uh, I've got over here some time tokens. These are added for the solo mode as well. So the solo mode comes with a sheet of tokens that you... The solo tablet I have, booklet I have, comes with a sheet of tokens you have to cut out because um, I think Paul was giving them away at uh, very, very little cost. But uh, there's also, um, there's also like three scenarios in here as well. Like, so there's uh, Garolium's Tournament here, which is like the, uh, the sort of standard solo mode. And then there's also the Fiery Siege, which is a special scenario, and the Saltash Necromancer, which is another special scenario as well. Um, there's a few notes on some cards that need to be treated differently. And the other notable thing about this as well is it's actually also co-designed by Russ Law. So Paul Stapleton, the designer of Pauper's Ladder and the publisher of uh, the game as well and bed owner of Bedsit Games, he, he wrote this with Russ Law, who has a company called gunpowder studios and they've published a few things they've published a bag of dungeon which is like this dungeon crawling game that you can kind of see down here they also published a game called seven moons which is like a fantasy sort of adventure city game uh that i have actually got a review copy of but have not yet covered so we'll get around to that russ i promise but in the meantime what we've got uh here is the beginning of our adventure so the game itself is very straightforward. On your turn, you basically just move your person around the regions on the board. So you can see the board's all these different uh, regions, and each region has a number of tile spaces in it. 
So this is a two tile region, this is a three tile region and so forth. They're all different types. So you've got your mountains, your swamps, and these are all uh, shown actually on the, um, the side here with these decks of cards. So we've got swamp regions, which are these brown ones here. We've got mountains, which are the gray ones here. We've got mines, which are these dark burgundy ones here. The beach, which are the yellow ones, and the forest, which are the green ones. And effectively on our turn, what we're going to do is we're going to move our bird and we're going to move our meeple and we're going to either encounter a card that's already been put out from a previous turn or we're going to draw a card and resolve it. And the cards are typically either um, ingredients we need for crafting recipes or events or monsters. Um, and actually for the solo mode setup, there should be a few uh, cards on the board already as well. So let me go ahead and put those out. This is to show you I didn't rig anything. So we start with a card face up on the beach here. We've got some pearls. And you can see as well that we've got the four cities. Those are the red areas. They have a quest card as well as a shop with equipment in it over there. All right, we get a forest card up here. There's a chemist's pouch. This is good. It's basically an ingredients card, but with four ingredients on it. So that's helpful. Uh, we've got in here a bandit. So if you lose to the bandit, he's going to steal a bunch of your money. Uh, over here, we've got another bandit. Oh dear, I'm going to get robbed blind. This adventure only just began. So now I need to throw... Um, oh no, now I need to draw a card from my outcome deck. That's the wrong camera. Where is... I've got too many cameras. Here we go. Outcome deck. Right. I'm going to draw a card, and based on the number, we'll put a card out in the mines as well. So it's a two. And so the two means that we're going to add a card to this mine up here, right here. So that's Demon Teeth, which is another crafting recipe as well. So that's quite good. We've got some stuff. If only we can find some... Uh, nice recipes to make with that so here is some recipes and we're going to draw four of these and pick three to start with and then we'll build a little marketplace up here as well one two three four those two are the same so i'm going to ditch this one and replace it with something else in the uh game with multiple players there would be a bit of cycle in this marketplace but in my game there's not so much so the these are the feet of knowledge if we complete five recipes we'll get the feet of knowledge but the way they kind of manifest in the game is that you've got these uh, special powers so this one's swim your pauper can swim from one coastal region to another coastal region this is instead of their normal movement and then on the back here, you'll see the three things we need to unlock Swim. And we need uh, any two of these. We don't need all three. So we need a Shell, Demon's Teeth, or Iron Ore. We've also got uh, Transmute here, which says, When your Pauper encounters an ingredient, you can discard it and collect two gems. That could be useful. Gems is just money, but they're very, very useful. Uh, we've got the Redeemer. When your pauper discards equipment after using it, roll the Lucky Charm. That's just a die. Uh, if you roll a happy face, you can keep the equipment. Okay, so we can keep... Uh, treat it as unused. That's pretty good. And finally, Unlock. This recipe counts as a key when your pauper is unlocking strong boxes or treasure chests in the region they occupy. So there is keys in the equipment deck that we can find and use to unlock treasure chests if we come upon them. I always have keys in the game where there are no chests and find chests in the game where I have no keys. Uh, I'm not going to take unlock. Let's take these other ones. I think they'll be more helpful. So I'm going to put these here with their ingredients on them. Um, oh, this camera, this is the one I want. There we go. And you can see all the different sort of ingredients here that I need to make these. A dwarf beard, an enchanted log or iron ore, fairy dung, dragon heart, yeti claws, shell, demon teeth, and iron ore. Fantastic. We're off to a good start. Now, 
I also get to start with one piece of equipment. So that's good because otherwise it's going to be tough out there. Um, I get to buy one from the uh, from the the city. Actually, I get to buy one from the city I occupy, and I also start with. Surely I start with some money. I think it's five. Yep, five. So we'll go ahead and add some money to our purse here. Five little copper coins. Now we can, uh, to unlock the virtue of generosity, we have to accrue 30 of these and then we spend them all. So this is the, the virtue of generosity. We amass 30 coins and then spend them. Uh, just give them away. The recipe book, we need uh, five. So this is the, the virtue of knowledge. We need to complete five of these recipes. So we start with three. And when we do one, we get to draft another one. When we do a second, we draft a fifth one. And then we've got to do all three of those. And then we'll have done all five. Here's the trophy room. This is where we keep the uh, the, the monsters that we slay. If we amass a total of 30 strength worth of monsters, then we can have a virtue. Or we can instead slay a dragon and discard the dragon just to get a virtue straight away. The virtue of... And those are two different virtues, so you can have them both. But each virtue can otherwise only be done once. Um, and then we've got the journal here, which uh, asks us to complete three quests. So we'll have a look at the quests in just a minute. But if we complete three quests, we can... We can do this virtue and that's also quite important because in this game we're going to have this new mechanism called time which isn't in the uh the multiplayer game so i'm going to take 14 of these time tokens and then every turn i have to spend one and i only get to have them back so we're playing on normal difficulty by the way normal difficulty gives you 14 time tokens four health for you and your bird and uh, you play on the three four side of your pauper if you want to escalate the difficulty to uh hard you can go on the the two side and you'll have the two player side of the pauper which wants you to have more stuff over here and also you can have uh, less time and less health but uh i don't want to do that yet <laughs> 11 12 13 14. 14 time tokens. There we go. Now, I get a time token back every time I slay a monster. I get to have a time token back every time I complete a quest. I get to have a time token back every time I complete a recipe. And I get to have three time tokens back every time I uh, complete a virtue. So that's good. Actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to do actually for ease. Is I'm going to grab a token from somewhere. Oh, I must have a little red thing. There we go. There we go. I'll put this guy out here and I'll just move him along the track as we go rather than uh, move the tokens around. Good, so I think uh, we need to pick... Uh, so we've got our five coins, so we need a piece of equipment, and we need to pick our bird as well. So we've got four loyal royal birds. We've got the swift, and at any point in your turn, you can pay four gems to train the swift, and then it gets a special power. It can move three regions, although it can't move through regions containing hazards. You've got the canary... And uh, when you train the canary, it gets the ability, before it moves, it can peek at the top card in one region deck. Oh, that's useful. The magpie. When the magpie collects gems, collect one extra gem. That's pretty useful. And the crow. The crow adds one to its strength in fights. These are all really useful. What do you guys like? Magpie, Crow, Canary, or Swift? I think they're all actually really good. Brian says Crow! Here we 
go. Extra strength. Nice. All right, let's take a look at the. Uh... Sorry, Haggers, you got, you got <laughs> beat to, the... beat to the punchline there. And uh, I'm gonna regret not having the magpie later when I'm broke. So these are the equipment cards currently available for purchase in uh, Blue Veil. We can take a look. Every town also has a rare item. Difter, now you're just trolling me. <laughs> Uh, the rare item in Blue Veil is the Trusty Hound. Adds one to your pauper strength. This can be used in addition to a weapon. That's great. It's also eight, eight gems, which we don't have. Uh, but I do really want the dog. <laughs> We've got a ball of yarn. When your pauper draws from the mine deck... Peek at the top two cards, choose one to play, and return the other to the top or bottom. That's actually really useful. I don't know why the ball of yarn does that, but that's actually really useful. We've got some demon teeth. This is an ingredient. Yep. But uh, there's already some of that on the board, so I can just find that if I need it. We've got a shovel. When your pauper draws from the re beach deck, peek at the top two cards. Okay, so this is the same as the ball of yarn, but for the beach instead of the mine. And finally, we've got a recall potion. When your pauper explores in a wild region, discard this to draw a card from that region's discard pile. That's probably more useful later in the game when I've seen some of the cards and... You know, I have a bit better, like, I, I could go back and get something that, um, that I might want. Something specific that I might want. Good, so with that, I think, oh, I get to buy one of these. Duh. I think we should probably buy the ball of yarn, because the mines are really dangerous. It's expensive, though, but I don't actually want any of the others, particularly right now. So let's take the uh, the ball of yarn for four gems. Now we just have to go into the uh, the mine and hope for a uh, treasure or some such. Okay, so I'm all set up. I'm ready to take my first turn. So the deal is this: as a pauper, I can move one region. Um, and you'll see all the regions have little bridges connecting them, so you move between the bridges. So, I mean, from here in Blue Vale, I can move to any of these adjacent uh, regions anyway. But um, you can uh, move your pauper, you can move your bird, and you can move them in any order that you want. They can move one step, and you can pay a gem to move an additional step. Now, it should be noted that because of the bandit here, I would have to stop in here and fight the bandit. Except this is a solo mode, so I could hide from the bandit if I didn't think I had a good chance of beating them. Oh, we should look at the quests. The quests are important. So here in Blue Vale, we've got the quest of storm damage. Help repair a damaged lighthouse. In a beach region containing the lighthouse, roll the lucky charm three times. Roll one happy face to succeed. Reward three gems and equipment. Okay, well that's quite tricky because now we need to mill the beach deck looking for the lighthouse. I should have got that shovel. Is debating changing the ball of yarn for the shovel. Let's finish looking at these other quests. Here in Greyhaven, we've got the quest of treasure at sea. An old pirate needs someone to find the treasure stowed on his old ship. Find five gems in the shipwreck. Discard them when you're in this city to gain three gems or two equipment. I mean, again, both of these require me to find specific beach cards. So I'm 100% going to swap out that uh, ball of yarn for the shovel. <laughs> it is done. I get one gem back. Because the sluffer shove the slu the Wow! Oh my god. <laughs> when I'm done having a stroke. 
The shovel is <laughs> the shovel is cheaper than the ball of yarn. Um, okay, good. We've also got up here in Lilacsville the poisoned herbs. So this is in the uh, swamps. It says poisoned gas blights hatcheria. Its chemists are unable to brew potions. Have three or more learned recipes when you're in the swamp region containing hatcheria. Reward four gems. Well, I'll probably wind up doing that eventually. And then here in Black Sand, we have the Gambler's Curse. A penniless man swears revenge on a nearby gambling den. Win five gems in the gambling den. Discard them when you're in this city to gain two equipment. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, I think that's it. I think we're all ready to start. So I think we should just go to the beach and start looking for this lighthouse. It seems reasonable. Let's send uh, our uh, our pauper in first so we can just use our shovel. So you draw two off the top of the... So when we go in here, we can either look at one of the existing cards, henceforth known as tiles, or we can draw one off the top of the deck and resolve it. Because we have the shovel, we get to draw two and choose one to resolve. So the first one we've drawn is the fish scales. Now this is a recipe item and only used for crafting and it will just live here until someone picks it up to use it because we don't need it for any of our recipes we just would leave it there so not particularly useful so probably gonna put that on the bottom of the beach deck the other card is hidden stash collect three gems then discard this card well that's great let's definitely do that because Money is awesome. We need it to buy weapons and cool things. So I'm going to wind up putting both of these into a... Well, I'm actually going to put the fish scales on the bottom of the deck. And I'm going to put the uh, hidden stash here into a discard. There we go. So, we didn't find the lighthouse. Let's move our crow in who can also do a encounter bear in mind that if i draw a monster here the crow has to fight it poor crow i didn't though we actually found a feather do we need this no we don't so we just put the feather out here and we can come back for that in due course and now that is the end of our turn so we must uh move on the timer and let me just go again and that's pretty much how the game works. Um, so, am I gonna? I might stay here on the beach and send my crow off to the forest. I'm conscientious as well that quite a lot of the ingredients I need come from the mountains, so it might be useful to go explore the mountains. But I don't really want to fight that bandit yet. I'm just not feeling confident. I mean, when you do a fight, you simply draw a card from the outcome deck. And that could be anything between like two and six. So it's it's a bit like throwing a d6. And then I also get to throw this luck die thanks to my Ginny's Whittler weapon. But this is 50, 50, zero or one. And then there's a one, two on it as well. Two ones, a two and three zeros. So the problem is if the bandit wins, he's gonna steal my shovel. I don't want him to steal my shovel. It's the only thing I have other than my Whittler and my crow. So I think we should send the crow up to the forest and see what's going on up there. And maybe he can make his way over to the mountains up here. The crow surely has enough. Well, the crow doesn't have its power yet, Chris. So the crow, um, the crow needs to be trained well, we could train it. We have the we have five gems now, actually. We could train the crow and send it to kill the bandit. That would be fun. Let's do that. Let's go peck the bandit's eyes out. How about that? So here's four gems to train the crow. The earlier we train him, the better he is. There we go. And now he adds one to his strength in fights. Okay. Go, crow. Fight the bandit. 
So the bandit has a strength of four. It's a humanoid. And it's if we kill it, we can have two gems or uh, a piece of equipment. Or, and if we fail, we lose a piece of equipment, which sucks. Um, but we do have two things going on here. So the first thing to note here is that the crow can't... Um, use any equipment. So the crow can't attack the bandit with my Whittler. That just doesn't work. Um, we'll draw an outcome card and then we can spend a gem to add a luck die. That's something you can always do in combat. You can just spend a gem to throw the luck die and add that as well if you want. Um, the final thing we can do with the bandit if we defeat it is instead of taking the two money or the equipment, we can add it here to the trophy room and now it's four strength towards the 30 we need for the virtue of bravery. Anyway, let's pull an outcome card and see if how the crow does. Come on, crow, you can do it. I believe in you. All right, that's three. It says discard one equipment to add two to your strength. So I could do that. I could discard my shovel and then the crow would win. Or I could pay one gem and throw the die. I have to decide, I think, uh, before moving on to the die throw. So, 50-50 we win and lose, or give up the shovel, win for sure. Uh, if I lose, though, I'm going to lose the shovel anyway. So, I probably just need to lose my shovel. <laughs> Feels bad, but let's give up the shovel. Save my crow. <laughs> Hit him with the shovel. I wish I could, um, Michael, I wish I could, but I'm not there. It's my crow is off doing it all on his own. So, anyway, discard the shovel and kill the bandit. And get four strength, I think, because uh, if we keep him here in the trophy room as well, we might be able to use him to fulfill a quest or something later, or we'll just be working towards our goal there anyway. And now I'm destitute once more with not a penny to my name and I don't even have my shovel anymore. So let's uh, just go hunting on the beach and see if we can't find that lighthouse. Nope, instead we found a shell. But the good news is that the shell is something we need to unlock our swim power. So we're one, one item on the route to the swim power. Fantastic. And now I've resolved both characters and this moves on. And now I get to just keep going. So I think Crow might just stay in the mountains and see if he can't find a dwarf's beard. So let's do Crow first. Dwarf beard? No, we found a supply crate. You can fight this crate and smash it open. It has five strength. And if you succeed, you get an equipment. I mean, the odds of that are pretty slim. But uh, the crow does add one strength, so you might as well try and smash it open. Incredibly, the crow succeeds in smashing open the crate by dint of drawing exactly the right outcome card. <laughs> Good job, crow. Bring me, bring me the, uh, the contents of the crate, which is one random item. Assassin crow? Yeah, hero crow. I want, I want that too. Uh, we've found a holy potion. When your pauper encounters an undead hazard, discard this to defeat it without fighting. Yeah, the crow's actually a magpie in disguise. It's a goth magpie. <laughs> uh, right, and now I'm just going to go back to my beach and keep digging for a lighthouse, I think. Eventually the beach will fill up with junk and then I'll have to move on. Oh, no, I've encountered a sea beast. Oh, uh, this is bad news. I can't defeat that. I'm for sure going to die. All right, well, I think I'm going to try to hide because that's strength seven. And I mean, there's a chance I flip a six and roll a one or two. But I think I might just, uh, I might just try to hide first. And then if I fail to hide, we'll find out what I get for fighting it.
What did I get? I got a zero. I failed to hide. So... I guess we're fighting it now. <laughs> I, I rolled a one. <laughs> Uh, so the the beast absolutely mauls me, which means I lose one of my coveted health points. No! I can't get these back by going into town. Oh, didn't I defeat a, uh, a hazard? I did. I defeated the bandit. So when I defeated the bandit, this should have moved back one. That's very important, because if it gets off the end, we lose. Um, good. Sort of good. We defeated a bandit, but then we got mauled by a sea beast. Sometimes that's just how... Life is. So, with that in mind, um, that's the end of the, the turn, and the time moves on once more. So. Right. I can't stay here on the beach without fighting the sea beast, so I guess I'll move up here to the forest and see what's going on up here. Ideally, an enchanted log or some fairy dung. That would be nice. No, it's an event! The Bird Handler! She will train an untrained bird in this region for free! Damn it! I could have saved so much money! Now she's just gonna hang out there and block up one of the tile slots. <sighs> Don't worry, Crow. You defeated a bandit and I'm proud of you. Um, speaking of which, I think Crow should just continue to search the mountains for a dwarf beard. Nope, instead we found Woolard. Place two gems from your purse on this card to discard one quest card from a city. Peek at the top four cards in the quest deck and place one in that city. Woolard stays in the region until it has six gems on it. That's cool. I can use that to cycle the quests in the cities. I like that. Um, that's actually really quite helpful. Right. Well, I still didn't find anything what I needed, so time marches inexorably on. Bonbon asks if she can come to say hello, so I'll go and uh, I'll go and let Bonbon in. So apologies if there's lots of bells or noises. Hello? Where are you? Did you want to come in? Leanne's out and Bonbon's bored. So, back to the... Hi! <laughs> okay, uh, what are we doing? Um, did I move on the timer for this round? I think I did. Move on the timer and... Now we move on with the game. So, uh, I guess we're going to visit the, uh, the northern beach up here now. As I still continue to try and find this uh, lighthouse, although I'm very far away. Or a shipwreck. I'd take a shipwreck, too. Nope, instead I found a sandworm. Who is six? Uh oh. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a show. You goof. All right, let's try to hide from the sandworm. It didn't work. I'm fighting the sandworm. I've drawn a one. It says, if you're in a coastal region, you can discard this card and draw again. I will. I will do that. Ah, a five. Do you know what that means? That means I can roll this die for my Whittler, and if I don't get a zero again, then I can have a kill. Because I need to match its strength of six. I'm gonna I'm blowing through all of my good outcome cards. Incidentally, I'm in a coastal region as well. That's uh any region that touches the outside of the board. Oh come on, please. 
please give me give me that sweet number what is it I can't see that looks like a one it's a one huzzah good sandworm is done now the question is do I keep this for the strength or turn it in for the money I think I, I kind of need some money feeling a little bit on the back foot like I need some money um yeah let's uh let's discard sandworm and have four gems 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 good and now what are you gonna do crow are you gonna continue to try and find me a dwarf beard I think I think yes oh I forgot about the chemist's pouch I'll tell you what, let's send Bird over to the forge this forest so we can collect that pouch and maybe finish one of these off. And we can go get the Demon Teeth over here, because actually the Demon Teeth will finish off the swim ability, and then the Bird can collect the other thing, and we can start towards... Although actually, do you know what, maybe I should wait, because I don't know which of these I'd rather have. It depends which of these four mountain three mountain ingredients I find first. So yes, let's, I, I've talked myself into staying in the mountains to see if we can find Yeti Claws, Iron Ore, or Dwarf Beard. What will we find? We found a Dwarven Tunnel! You may move to any region and explore it. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's just move to this region and explore it. And now we found an eagle! An eagle's trying to eat our crow. Pom Pom, what are you doing? Stop that. Sweetie. Alright, well. That's a mean eagle. Let's see if we can't defeat it. Boom! If another character is in this region, you may discard this card and draw again. So you're... The characters refer to both of your characters, so the pauper and the bird. But that's fine, actually, because that's a three plus one, because I'm a trained crow. Easily defeat the eagle. Easily. Thanks, Eggers. Thanks for hanging out. Catch you on the next stream. I think we should put the eagle down here and continue to work towards our, our feat of uh, bravery. So now we've got eight out of the 30 we need. Nice one. Good job. Good job, bird. The time marches on, and I'm going to probably go into Lilacsville so I can go get those demon teeth and finish off the swim, swim challenge, swim knowledge. But let's take a look at the equipment. I haven't seen the, what's in here yet, so there might be something really cool. Game time for defeating baddie. Thank you, Brian. I'm so glad you're on the ball with that because I keep forgetting. For defeating one baddie, we gain time. Now, in the in the Tower of Moons expansion, which sort of formalizes this solo mode, they actually have a, a player map for solo mode with all of these sort of like time influence things on it, which is really good. But I don't have that. So here we've got a crystal ball. Use this to peek at the top four cards of a region deck and then put them back in any order. That's that's pretty good. I'd rather it let me put some on the bottom of the deck, though. Rotten food. When your pauper encounters a humanoid hazard, discard it. Discard this to defeat it without fighting. Oh, well, that'd be quite good to help me take out this bandit, because he's a humanoid. Over here we've got... Well, this looks a, a dagger. Roll the lucky charm and add the number to your pauper's strength. I mean, that's the exact same as my whittler, so... I can't use both weapons anyway. A wood axe. And your pauper draws from the forest deck. So this is the shovel but for the forest. Look at two cards. Pick one to play. Put the other back on top of the bottom. Alright. And the rare item here in... Um, Lilacsville is... The Spirit Blade. Add one to your strength when you're fighting undead or magical hazards. In, oh... 
Add one to your strength. If you're fighting undead or magical hazards, add two instead. Nice. Well, that costs eight. And I'd rather have the doggo. I want the loyal dog. That's my goal now. How much money do I have? Five. Ugh, if I got the free bird training, I'd have enough to buy the doggo. It's fine. I'm not upset. Um, I can also buy health back uh, in the city. I can heal my health. But it costs three gems. So I'm not going to do it right now. I think it's three gems for one, one bit of health as well. Um, which is uh, which is pretty rough. Because if I run out of health, I'm dead. Yeah, one gem for one life. Oh. So, instead of looking at those cards, I could have paid a gem to heal myself. But that's fine. Um, I'll just uh, do it next time, I guess. Meanwhile, Bird is going to continue to search for rare mountain stuff. Come on, Bird. You can do it. I believe in you. Copper ore? I need iron ore! <sighs> so close, Crow. Don't worry. I'm not really mad at you. Not mad at you yet. Time moves on. And we're going to go get some demon teeth. So we pick these up instead of uh, doing anything else. And then we can complete our first recipe, which is swim. So we flip this over and now we have the swim ability. Which means we can move from a coastal region to another coastal region. Which is actually great because if you look like so many of them are coastal regions. In fact, there's only three regions, four regions, four regions that aren't coastal regions. Which is bonkers. So that's extremely useful. And now we get to take another uh, recipe. I like the sound of this strength. What is this? Add one to your pauper strength. This can be used in addition to a weapon. Great. Yep. I like that. I want to defeat the baddies. Alright. I need a feather. And copper ore. I've already got both of those things on the board. This was the right choice. Um, cool. So I guess uh, on Bird's turn, we're just going to collect this copper ore. And I'm just going to add that straight into my strength thing. Great. We're on the move, folks. You can't stop us. Here we go. That ticks on. Uh-oh. Um, don't worry about that. It's fine. And then uh, I'm just going to use my move to... Oh, but the sea beast is guarding the feather. Oh, I can't defeat it yet. I'm not good enough, probably. That's a real bummer. I don't know what to do about that. What I need is to get three more coins so I can um, have the doggo and the doggo can help me fight the sea beast. So let's go back over here and see if we can't find that lighthouse and or shipwreck. Nope, it's a razor fish. It's a real angry fish. Well, it's slightly less bad than the Sea Beast. Um, Alright, I shall attempt... I might as well just fight it. Let's just see what happens. Six! I could have defeated the Sea Beast. <laughs> God damn it. All right, well, Razorfish is dead. Ah, oh, and then I'll take three gems from defeating it. And I'll get a time back. And now I can afford my doggo. Want to go out, sweetie? Me done. I'm done playing. You have to go out. Because I'm not going to help again. Ah, 
All right, Bon Bon has left the building. Um, and she didn't even make an appearance on stream, so rude. Right, so, good, we've done that. Now it's back to searching for Dwarf Beard. Here at the uh, mountains. What have we got? No, we've got an Iron Golem. Well, he has iron, but he's also got six strength. So that's a bit rough. Um, and now he's going to attack my crow. I think the crow will try to hide. <laughs> Poor crow. That is a zero. The crow cannot hide. So the crow will have to fight the iron golem. And it's a one, which gives me two against the iron golem, six. So that's not going to work. So unfortunately, crow loses a hit point. Oh, poor crow. I don't like this. Poor crow. And that's the end of my turn. So time's going to move on. And... Then we're going to come back to my turn again. And I'm going to take a coastal trip uh, all the way around the outside of the board back to Blue Vale. Swimming is amazing. Okay, can I just say the swim ability is so good. Um, and now I'm going to buy that doggo. Get me that trusty dog. I actually don't know if it's particularly useful. I just really want the trusty doggo friend. Look at him. He's so cute. We can only have one yellow rare card, by the way. Um, so that's it. We can't have any cool swords or anything now. Because I bought a dog. Two, four, six, eight. And I bankrupted myself doing it. But I believe in Trusty Hound. We can do it together, friendo. Alright. Um, now, with this in mind... Uh, Bird has a bit of a problem, because Bird is... T I mean, I guess we can just come back here and keep looking for this lighthouse. I'm obsessed with this quest, but I'm... Yeah. Nope. Instead, we found a lizard man. With strength five. I'll show you guys a slightly better view of lizard man here. All right, well, um, I guess we'll try to hide from Lizard Man, because we're only Crow. And that's a one we've successfully hidden from Lizard Man, so Crow can keep some hit points. Cool. Uh-oh. All right, this is it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight Sea Beast get that feather and have my strength I can do it I can defeat you see I'm so screwed <laughs> I mean no I'm not I'm definitely gonna win this just need to roll a six it's a four it's a five with my trusty hound I mean I need to roll the equivalent of a six here um, so I can use my weapon uh, Ginny's Whittler but I need uh, two, so I need this to be a six, because uh, there's only a two. Effectively, there's only a two on one face of this die. Here we go. We can do it. I believe in us. I believe in our strength to defeat the sea beast with the, with the help of our trusty hound. It's a zero. My belief is not strong enough. Um, I've been wounded. Damn it. Uh, meanwhile, Bird, I guess, is just going to go south to the swamp. And we'll just have a look and see what's in the swamp. What's in the swamp is an Assassin's Guild. The Assassin's Guild will defeat one hazard in any region if you play them gems equal to the hazard's strength. Add that card to your trophy room. Okay, well that's one way to defeat the sea beast, I guess. But I still need seven money. And currently I have zero money. So that's not great. 
moving on, I need to go and do something heroic, like complete a quest, so I'm running out of time. Um, stupid sea beast? Right. So I could just, I, I can go anywhere from where I am, because I can just walk into that dwarven tunnel and magically appear anywhere. So, shall we go and explore the mines? The mines are often full of horribly hazardous things that are just going to get me in trouble, but maybe they'll be vast wretches or a treasure chest. Nope, there's a vampire. He's just as bad as the sea beast. But... I actually can just straight up eliminate him with this holy potion. So I could just throw holy water at the vampire and he's just straight up dead. Um, now the question is, do I take the seven um, the seven strength for my bravery challenge, which puts me on 15 halfway there, that's nice, or the five money, or the equipment. I think I think the equipment would be silly. Equipment's very rarely as much as five, unless it's the elite stuff. But I think we should take the seven. I think fifteen is real close to bravery victory, so it's not. It's halfway. But you know, we're making progress. Slowly but surely. We're getting there. Well Come on, trusty hound, onwards. Onwards and upwards. Um, where are you going, bird? What are my two powers that I'm trying to unlock with the bird here? We've got the Redeemer, which is... When your pauper discards equipment after using it, roll the Lucky Charm, you can keep it. So that would have applied to the Holy Potion I just got rid of. Um, but after roll a die, which everyone knows I'm real bad at. Or transmute. When you encounter an ingredient, you can discard it to collect two gems. That's quite useful. I think. Because I could also complete the strength with that um, item. But I think given that there's a feather on the board, I should use that item to try and get one of these other two. So I think we should send the bird in here and take the alchemist's pouch and apply it to the transmute ability. Cool. And that's the end of that turn. So this moves on, and that's not... Oh, I defeated a baddie, though. I got one back. Yeah, I mean, I just threw holy water on him, but that's fine. That counts. It counts. It all counts. So, so there. Now, where am I going from here? I didn't really think this, this part through. I guess we can go into the mountains and see if we can find a dwarf beard. Or yeti claws. No, it's a hill giant. He's a humanoid, and he's mad at me. And he's strength seven. I'm gonna try and hide. I failed to hide. I'm this I'm so bad at this die. So I guess I'm just fighting. It's a one. Passing wizard. Paid two gems to draw another outcome card and add it to this one. I don't have any money. The wizard leaves me to my fate, which is to die. I need to get to town because I have no money and I'm, I'm straight up about to die. Actually, this is very precarious because um, I'm now two steps away from town. And if I draw a hazard card, I could just straight up die. Um, I didn't think about that. If I'm honest, I don't think about that. I don't suppose the bird can go into town and buy me healing, can he? <laughs> Save me, Crow, you're my only hope. No. Additionally, there's an additional problem here, which is that you need money to heal anyway, and I don't even have any money. It's not going well. 
Quickly, Crow! Go and find some money somewhere! Um, how about here in the mines? They haven't proven dangerous and bad choices. Oh, you found some pearls? Well, I don't care! They're not worth any money! Damn it! I also realized actually I can just swim uh, out of here into the town. So that gets me to town, but... I should have taken money for the vampire. That's what I should have done. Oh, here's time. Time ticking away. Um, I should have taken money for the vampire because now the problem I've got is that even if I swim back to town, I still can't not. I still cannot do anything about my lack of hit points. So with this in mind, I think the best thing for me to do actually is to just get, walk onto the beach here and hope I stumble upon a shipwreck. <laughs> I've defeated most of the bad things that exist on the beach, right? Surely it's just nice things from here on out, like shipwrecks and lighthouses. Nope, it's another, it's another sea beast. <laughs> no, I need to hide or I'm probably doomed. I'd be also be quite cross if I defeat this sea beast and then I fail to defeat the other one and get my feather. Hide! I failed to hide. This is it. I need to draw a six here or I'm straight up dead. <laughs> uh, a six or a five. And I might be okay. No, it's a three. Uh, four. Five, six. Wouldn't do it. Um, I lose my last hit point. I think I'm dead. <laughs> this went really poorly. When I practiced this solo mode, I did a lot better. I actually won that. Um, right. Hang on. Bear with me. Uh, I've also, I've, I've also like only managed to hide from one hazard. When uh, you can heal, yeah, fighting hazards. Um, whenever you do. I mean, I. I've lost it now in the booklet, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I've lost and have died. <laughs> There's a how to play scenarios instruction here. Um, Yeah, I actually can't find it, which is really odd. I can't find it in here, but, um... Oh, either, either of your characters loses their last life. It's under game objectives. Yeah, I know, I've straight up lost. <laughs> you tried your very best. You traveled from one side of Brighthelm to the other, and you certainly came back wiser and better for it. But someone else got there first. You didn't much care for their smug smile. Though. This is not right. I'm going to read you the losing passage here and then I'm going to have to make up my own. Um, you didn't care much for their smug smile that was plastered across the front page of every newspaper, but you begrudgingly put it down to sour grapes. And anyway, surely if they won a tournament set by Gerolium herself, they should be good for the realm, your hometown, and your friends. Then taxes went up. Then the anti-poverty laws were imposed. Then your friends were marched to labor camps set up over the most dangerous gas mines in the land. Then, before too long, so were you. Looks like someone forgot what it was like to be poor. Oh, guys. That's what might have happened if I'd actually survived to make it back to my hometown. But actually what happened was... Uh, 
as the second of the two mighty sea beasts dragged you beneath the mighty waves, your final thought was you wished you'd made it back to your hometown to find who out who might have won the tournament in your stead. But you'll never know as your last dying breath escapes your lungs. Womp womp. Anyway, that's uh, that's Pulper's Ladder. Sorry that was uh, quite a brief one. Um, I lost in record time. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, um, this is a really sort of interesting game in that it's really reminiscent of um, ye olde board games. It really reminds me of, like, Talisman and um, the Sorcerer's Cave and just these sort of Uh, Brian says, in solo you can choose to burn X amount of time to remove a hazard in a region you don't currently occupy. Yes, you can absolutely um, spend time. There is a system here where you can spend time. So in the in the sort of the competitive game, you're doing the exact same thing I was just doing, but there's no time and no hit points. And instead the cards are coming out and you're just kind of racing each other around the board to snatch things up to do the virtues as quickly as possible. So it's the exact same thing, but people are doing it simultaneously. Not simultaneously. People are doing it in turn order, and uh, they might snatch something that you wanted uh, if you'd left it out. Um, so it says here you can... Uh, yeah, ingredients. So leaving, uh, removing region cards. You can remove ingredients and events for one time. Hazards with strength four for a time. Hazards with strength five to six. So I should have spent three time tokens probably to uh, remove the sea beast over here. So I could have had my feather and then I would have had plus one strength. But three times quite expensive. As you can see, that would have put me up here. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that would have helped, Brian, in the end. Um, I... I, uh, I actually, in the game I played on my own of this before I came on stream, I got my time like way down here and I spent much of the game sort of like just every turn trying to do like one thing that would like complete a quest or beat a hazard or whatever. Um, and so I would just like stay sort of one step away from death and then I started to complete the virtues and I sort of got a lot of time back that way. Um, but obviously Ginny Heaver's outing here did not go so well. We just got wailed on by a bunch of stuff and then we got killed. Um, and the trusty hound couldn't save us, which is deeply upsetting because it's the best card in the game, by dint of being a trusty dog. But yeah, I mean, the game itself is very reminiscent of these sort of older uh, older board games, you know, uh, games that are considerably dated. I mean, ultimately, it's, it's the game is very, very random. There are these decks that you're just kind of milling for cards. And you don't have a whole lot of autonomy. Uh, the hiding mechanism I was using doesn't even exist in the competitive game. So if a, a creature comes out, you just have to fight it. Of course, there's no penalty if you lose. You just kind of don't get to do a thing. Um, and then someone else might come into the region and kill the beast and take the reward. Um, but uh, weirdly, there's something really compelling about this game. I don't know if it's the charm of the art or the sort of the little bits of text or uh, the the concept of a ma sort of doing these sort of overarching virtue quests um, or I like these uh, knowledge as well I like these knowledge things that give you these cool powers that you can unlock um, it is very random it is a roller coaster but the game is short enough and charming enough that I kind of just forgive it and enjoy it anyway. Um, I really like this game in spite of itself, and I'm not entirely sure why. It's quite hard to defend, really. There's not a, an awful lot of decision making in it, and it's mostly just deck milling, and it's mostly completely random, but every time I've played it, I've quite enjoyed it, and I found it to be just incredibly charming. So I don't know if the expansions would massively improve it, because I think they just add more randomness, but yeah, there's something... Yeah, exactly, Brian. There's just something really chill and endearing about this game. Um, Brian says the extra stuff in the Moon Towers adds more character as well. I can believe that. I mean, uh, I definitely like to check out the expansions for sure if I get a chance. Um, because, yeah, I just 
find uh this is the first time i played it solo um and uh, i found the solo to be you know like quite often i'll start learning a solo mode for stream and uh then i'll stop and get ready for streaming and i finished playing this all on my own because i was having a nice time um and it, it is just very relaxed and it's probably the lack of demanding decision making like it is just a bit of a roller coaster you ride like you know at the end of the day you can be like okay i need a, an ingredient from the mountains so i'll go to the mountains or there might be a quest you know like the two quests on the beach right so i was like okay i'll just go to the beaches then because i might find either the lighthouse or the shipwreck so very low level decision making but that's completely fine sometimes and Again, you sort of just discover these sort of neat little things like, you know, the town of Woolard or the Assassin's Guild or something. You know, you just find these sort of nice little things that that uh, surprise you and have a bit of charm. So, yeah, it's a game I really like in spite of itself. You know, you're not going to get much. I, w I don't know if I'd play it with more than three people. It does go up to four. Uh, three was quite amusing. Um, although, again, a lot, there was a... It wasn't a lot of downtime, but also there was a little bit too much for such a light game. Um, and uh, yeah, if we hadn't probably been sort of very chill and having a drink, um, I probably would have started to get a bit annoyed with the downtime before too long. But the game is very short. Um, and I think it too, it's 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 nice. And uh, the solo mode's really nice as well. Um, Brian says in the in the upcoming expansion, that's the cobbled uh, island. You said there's a true uh, co-op mode as well. That's great. I'd be I'd be really up for trying that. I think that'd be a really fun little uh, charming adventure. Um, I think that the co-op co-op mode would be really neat. Yeah, and the uh, the art is all I I think done by Paul as well, and it's really nice and charming. You know, it's um. It's just sort of something pleasant about the world of 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 um pauper's ladder that i i just want to go and i want to go and have a, have a holiday on on this world even though uh i did actually get taken apart by sea beasts so maybe it's not as charming as i think anyway i hope you all enjoyed this uh little little romp and um if you're interested in the game you go and check out uh bedsit games that's paul's company um i don't think he has many games on there but, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's an independent game designer, so it's always nice to support them if you think this is something that you might enjoy with, uh, you know, with uh, your kids or, or you know, uh, something like that. But, uh, yeah, a wonderful, charming little game. Thank you for coming on this adventure with me, and <laughs> I hope uh, you'll join me for the next thing, which will probably be something a bit more... Um, a bit more demanding of my cognitive abilities. Having said that, maybe if I'd applied myself, I might not have got taken apart by sea beasts. <laughs> That's my fault. I do not feel like that was bad luck. I do feel like I played that very poorly. So maybe we'll have another go at Pauper's Ladder. And if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. And if you'd like to, check out the Patreon as well where I will be posting up all of the games I brought back from UKG that I have review copies of and asking the patrons what they'd like to see first. I hope you can join me there, but if you can't, please come to the streams because it's always nice to have you. Have a lovely evening, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.